Welcome to Instant Deck Techs. The aim of this series is to give you a short, concise guide on how to build a certain deck. It won't cover every card, but we'll go through all the categories and go over the types of cards needed to make the deck work. Any card mentioned will be down in the description below. The commander of this deck is Volo Guide to Monsters. It is 2 green blue for a 3 2 legendary creature, Human Wizard. It has, whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature you control or a creature in your graveyard, copy that spell. As a reminder, a copy of a creature spell becomes a token. This is going to be a Simic creature value deck. We're going to be using Volo to copy all of our creatures so we can make an overwhelming board state and win the game. Let's first talk about the main ability of Volo. Firstly, it's a very strong effect, with being able to double up our creatures. But it does obviously come with a restriction to the deck building, that being that ideally we only want to have one of each creature type in the deck. Volo itself, being a human and a wizard, means that both of them are already out of the picture, as any more we cast we won't ever get a copy of. So when you're picking a creature, make sure it's the best of that type, as ideally you can only pick one. In this video I'll try not to cross over creature types as much as possible. I'd also recommend looking for ones with only one creature type, or ones with really unique creature types so they don't overlap with other ones and limit your choices. There are cards like Mistform Mask and Unnatural Selection which may give you some play in letting you play doubles, but because Vela's ability also checks the graveyard, there isn't really a real way around this yet. And one last thing to mention is that because of how this card is templated, it doesn't work with token doublers. Basically it's the spell that's copied and the creature comes in as a token, it's not an effect creating a token which is what these need to trigger. Velo does work however with effects that trigger when you copy to spell, so Twinning Staff for example will give you an extra token. Ok, with all that out of the way, let's start with our card draw. First up is effects on creatures that draw us cards. These are either on effects as they enter or when they die. Because we're getting multiples of these when we cast them, the rate on something like Felgree Familiar and Generous Stray doubles, and gets to a point where I think these cards are pretty reasonable for how cheap they are, and definitely becomes worth considering. Also I know with legendaries like Fibblethip and Karuga, we'll have to sack the token to the legend rule, but we'll get their card draw and that's what's most important in a deck like this. While we're talking about creatures, Loyal Drake is a very solid include in any deck with blue, which in this deck gets a lot better when we can make two of them really easily with our commander. After those we can look at some effects which draw us cards when creatures come into play or when we cast them. These won't trigger off the tokens, but will still be really good in the deck. The biggest question you may have to ask yourself is are you willing to use your elf and druid slot on Beast Whisperer? With all the creatures that we're running in this deck, we can run some cards that let us play them from the top of our library, as this is a form of card draw, with cards like Vizier of the Menagerie and Vivian Monsters Advocate, a good example of these if you have them. And then, because we're in Simic, we can also look at running some just good one-time card draw spells. These may not have the upside of some of the creatures, but they are consistent and will help us get to those creatures and the other effects that we want to be hitting. Talking of some other effects we want to be hitting, let's talk about our ramp. We're slightly more limited on creatures to ramp us, as so many of them turn out to be elves. However, there's still a decent selection for us to choose from. Because these on screen here are all types of mana dorks that generally need to sit in play for them to do their work, do keep that in mind when it comes to picking our win conditions. And then fortunately, as we're in green, we have access to rampant growth and all its variants. Use this to fill in any gaps in your ramp, there's also plenty of creatures in the colours that care about landfall, so if you're running those, these go up in value as well. Moving over to our interaction, let's start with some creatures. Getting multiples of these out will be awesome, just think of all the lands you can blow up with a Terastodon. And then, for some instant speed interaction, the Beast Within variants will do a great job in the deck. These scale really nicely in Commander and are always good inclusion in a Simic deck. And then when it comes to board wipes, I'm a big fan of Curse of the Swine and Azuri's Predation, when you need to answer a growing board state. Generally speaking, you should match your interaction to your playgroup. If it's more combo orientated, then you need to run more instant speed interaction. If your format's a bit slower, then the creatures will do a great job. Having some protection in the deck will be very handy. We want to keep our commander out, allowing us to get as much value as possible. After the standard Lightning Grease and Swiftfoot Boots, we can also look at some counter magic and things like Heroic Intervention to stave off the inevitable board wipe. You can run some more counter spells in your interaction section if you want, but in a deck like this that cares about creatures, be really picky with when you fire them off. I only ever want to use them to stop a Wrath that cripples us or to stop an opponent from winning the game. For Recursion, we're mainly going to be looking at non-creature spells. There's just too much overlap on creature types. The only real include could possibly be Genesis, but it does have to die before you get the effect you actually want from it, and this deck doesn't have too much discard that normally comes with a Genesis. Ok, let's move on to some ways of winning the game. We can't talk about a creature based deck with green without mentioning Creature Hoof and its variants. They're big, they're dumb, and they will win a game of Commander, a definition of a win con. We're slightly less instant, but still a very good way of winning the game, getting two loyal guardians with our Commander will be a really solid way of buffing up a whole board. With all those buff effects, we can look to running some token makers. There is a world where we don't need the buff from a Creature Hoof effect, and just the sheer number of tokens these can make could serve out at closing a game. Having two Avenger of Zendikas out and then playing a land will just be very good. What could also be quite fun in this deck is Combine Chrysalis. Giving half our board flying and then allowing us to turn a value creature into a 4-4 beast which also gets flying isn't nothing, and for the budget builds could be a very solid win condition. Let's look at some other cool things we can do with our commander that will allow us to win the game. Getting two Diluvian Primordials will be silly. 
Casting the best two instants and sorceries from our opponent's graveyards should give us a ton of value, and will also get better the stronger our opponent's decks are. It does serve them right if they're playing any extra turn cards. Moving on to Kaiga the Tidestar. The fact it's legendary actually works in its favour as we're getting one death trigger straight away. Stealing the best thing on the board and still leaving us with a 5 5 flyer will be great. If you're not running Crater Hoof, then you can look to running Rampaging Baloths. Two of these creating those 4 4 beasts should get out of hand nice and quickly, and obviously it does get better if you're running more of the rampant growth effects we mentioned earlier. But what if you want more value? Then I'd recommend looking to something like Bramble Sovereign to get even more copies of those creatures. And then because more is more, with all those ETB effects running around, Panharmonicon and Kundra's Closet will do a great job at doubling up all those effects and giving us a ton of value so we can move forward to the late game and win the game. And then one last wink on, which I think is kind of fun, is that by casting Uvermelt Hydra with Volus out, let's just go and get any two lands from our deck. Those two lands can be Thestian Stage and Dark Depths for those who need to hit face with a 2020 Flying Squid Monster. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, I'm a big fan of the Cyclone lands to help smooth out our draws. The Nalconris Refuge lets us make a blocker, or play something big at instant speed so we can swing through with it on the next turn. And then you can look at something like Scavenger Grounds to help keep those pesky graveyard decks in check. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We have recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base, which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck tech on. Thank you very much for watching.